dental students. My name is Dr. Henry Sander and I welcome you in our Dermology YouTube channel. Today I want to show you a very simple but very useful isolation at the lower jaw from premolar to premolar, from the left to the right side. Let's start our work. We're starting from tooth number 35 to tooth 45. I have two sets of clamps. One of them are wing clamps, number two. The clamps from company Tornium. And the other set of clamps is clamp number WD2 without wings, the same company Tornium. Rubber dump plate with thin, thin. Start with connection. Our rubber down plate with metal frame. We're using a standard metal frame from company Vintage in this lesson. Of course, I made separate collection of frames for you, all types, all, all kinds, size, and the others. Connect your rubber down plate to frame. You must have equal small tension from all sides without any other problems. For working at the lower jaw, we always made perforations lower than this line. We did not make perforations for premolars at the middle of the metal frame, but also at the lower third of frame. For premolars, we work with the middle hole at the puncture. And at the start of this work, always check interdental contacts so you can receive information that you can make interdental inversion rubber dump plate at your patient. Always check all contacts. And of course, between first molar and third premolar. All right, we, we can do this isolation. To have enough space for cover for cover your frontal tooth at the upper jaw. You need additional space at the rubber dump plate. I switch my camera. Such way, you need additional space. So you start to making perforations at the lower third of your inside space of your lower of your metal frame. Start from the central central tools, the sizes to canines and premolars. Don't start from premolars to insiders. Central incisors, I made small perforations. I think it's better and com more comfortable for you during this education to make perforations from the center, very, very near with your metal frame, bottom side of your metal frame. Two holes for central incisors. Lateral incisors. Increase the size of perforation and make perforation for right canine and left. 
symmetry for it. Make the same size perforations for premolars. Check your position of perforations. Very good. First, start with clamp with wings. Clamp number two. I open stereo pack for this clamp. And we start from, and of course, don't forget to test position of clamp at your tooth. In some cases, in some patients, you have some special situations and you must always be sure that the clamps stand stable. Then remove clamps. and start fixation clamps in the rubber dump plate. Insert one wing in the perforation and tense this rubber dump perforation to the other wing. You have two wings at the inner side of the rubber dump plate and two at the outer. Repeat it with the other clamp. Good. Fix the one of the clamps. I start from the left at the your clamp pillars. Re release angles of frame and put one clamp to the model. Tooth number 35. Very gently. Then repeat this to the right side. If you did not recognize this tooth through the small perforations, mark them with the marker. It's not problem in clinic, not problem on your plastic model. Fix your rubber dump plate at the all angles of your metal frame. And then release your rubber dump from the plate. You can use uh, any instruments, but typically you can use any instruments, but typically I'm using metal therapeutic probe. And then start to interdental flossing to invert rubber dam into interdental spaces. In mouse you have cella, so you very easy. It's easier than on plastic model. Carefully distribute all perforations to tooth. Don't lose your perforations during your work because it's very typically in the mouse you can lose your perforations in interdental spaces of adjustment tooth.
Let's try to make some inversions. In some situations, maybe you want to uh, work at the cervical area. During working at the cervical area, I prefer to use Brinker clamps. But if you did not have this or have another clinical goals, you maybe wish to make inversion. This is very good uh, exercise to grow up your inversion skill. Maybe you like to make beautiful photo with your very, very interesting clinical work. I finish inversion only on incisors. I hope you see very well the result of inversion. Such picture you must receive at, your, at the mouth of your patient. Uh, also, what can we do during this work? Any type of Any type of interdental contacts between all these two. Cervical area, if we're using close ligature, in not very hard situations. But I like to stay to place Brinker, gingival retraction at this premolars if I work with the cervical area. Continue our exercise and made floss ligatures to these two. Connect two ends of this floss and find the middle. Make a loop from this floss with one movement. And then repeat it again. Your double ligature is ready. I place it to the tooth number 32. Check position of ligature at the uh, lingual side. You or your assistant can help you to control position of the ligature with the probe. It's good. And then fix it to your frame. For the lower jaw, it's very good to fix your frame at the nearest angle of the frame. I'm using bottom left side. Small tense your floss over the screw and fix it with the rubber down. Very nice. And then, at the end of this exercise, making an envelope. Put the free margin inside, small tents down and cover it with the free angle of your rubber down plate. 
Yeah, or your assistant can repeat this symmetrically and synchronously from the other side. Put the inner part of your rubber template outside and fix to the angles of your frame. The envelope is ready. This is our clinical situation to work. Something like this. Let's try to disassemble this isolation. If you finish your work in clinic, first of all, release this envelope. If you have any loss ligatures, then remove your ligatures. You cannot remove safely, remove rubber down without removing ligatures. I remove ligatures with the probe by moving it from the gingival side uh, coronally. It's removed. Good. Then remove your clamps. And then carefully you, you can remove your rubber gum from interdental spaces. Check what is the problem with your rubber gum. Did you lose any parts of this material in interdental spaces of your patients. Check it. And then it's finished. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, write it in the comments below. Don't forget to like our video and share it with your friends or colleagues. Thank you. See you soon.